We've talked about certain Wi-Fi attacks like Ergeden as being kind of noisy, but what that actually means is that they're relatively simple and straightforward to detect with tools like Wireshark. Today, we'll jump into Wireshark and show you how simple it is to detect a simple jamming attack that most CryptKitties will be familiar with on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Most attacks against Wi-Fi networks use two different types of packets in order to achieve the effects they need. Now this can be as simple as trying to grab a WPA handshake in order to try to crack a password, or it can be something like deauthenticating all users on a network in order to effectively jam an entire channel. Now in order to detect an attack like this, you'll need a tool like Wireshark, and if you're running Kali Linux then it should be installed by default. Now, if you're not running Kali Linux, you can go ahead and install it for your particular operating system. However, your internal wireless card may not be able to be put into monitor mode. Now, this is important because if you don't do this, you'll only be able to hear traffic that's coming to your device. But if you find that your uh, computer doesn't have a card that supports monitor mode, you can always purchase one that is supported by Kali Linux and you should be good to go. With that being said, let's begin. So the first step of using Wireshark is locating your network card. In order to do that, you'll need to type ifconfig or IPA. Here we can see that the name of my wireless network adapter is WLAN0. So to put it into monitor mode, I'll type airmon ng start WLAN0. Now that will go ahead and turn into monitor mode and we'll see that it is now called WLAN 0 mon. So to get started with Wireshark, we can go to the menu in Kali Linux and go ahead and select Wireshark here. And we should see a list of all the various network adapters that we have available to us. We can also see a little bit of activity happening in this graph here. So the first thing we'll wanna work with is something called a capture filter. Now the capture filter allows us to do certain things like specify which packets we want to keep and which packets are irrelevant to us. So we'll just drop and not save into the overall file. That cuts down on the size of this file, which can get extremely large if you're working on a network with a lot of traffic. So in this case, we're going to be looking into two different types of attacks. And if we want to detect them, we can use the following capture uh, filter in order to exclude packets that we don't want. So we're gonna type WLAN type MGT, and that will say that we want management packets only, and then we'll say and parentheses subtype dauth or subtype DISASSOC, and then close parentheses. Oops, and I misspelled dauth. There we go. So this capture filter will specify that we only want to receive management frames so we can monitor for the kinds of attacks that we're looking for from this particular uh, attack that we're looking at. So in this case, we're going to look at two different attacks. One of them is MDK3 and the second is Airplay NG. Both of them will functionally work to uh, block or jam a wireless network. Now, one thing that Wireshark cannot do that we'll have to do ourselves is actually set the wireless network adapter to a particular channel. Now we can, if we want to scan through all channels, basically let it do that by using uh, arrow dump ng to automatically scan. But in this case, we're going to set it to the channel we want to attack, which is channel five. So to do that, we'll go back into our terminal window and type airmon, oops, uh, arrow dump ng wlan zero mon, and then tac c, now once we start that, it will set our card to that channel and we'll now be on channel 5 and not receive anything other than that uh, particular channel. So that prevents us from seeing things that might be happening that are irrelevant to us because generally a Wi-Fi conversation will all be on one channel. So let's go ahead and start, press return, and we should initially see nothing. Now that is good because it means that there's no attacks in progress, but let's go ahead and change this up by using MDK3 to start attacking this channel. So 
there is actually data being exchanged on this channel. We just don't see it because of the capture filter uh, dropping anything that's not the kind of frames we're looking for. So we're going to say MDK3, WLAN0 mon, D for deauthentication, and then TAC C for channel 5. Let's run this attack and see if we see any indications. So instantly, we can see that the channel is being dominated by yellow and orange packets. Now, if you are just seeing uh, regular uh, colored packets that aren't special in any way, that's because I've applied a special filter in order to be able to tell the difference between deauthentication and disassociation attacks. Now, if you go into View and then Coloring Rules, you can see that I've used the following display filters in order to basically highlight different types of attacks. Now, for the disassociation packets, I've typed uh, w, uh, MDK3 attack because only MDK3 uses disassociation uh, attacks in order to achieve its goal, whereas orange uh, filter right here for Airplay NG is for disassociation or MDK3 because both of these tools use this type of packet. Now, you can change the color by clicking on them and adjusting them here. And anything you want to stand out, you can pretty much highlight in this way with a filter rule. So I'm going to click OK. And now I will stop the attack. And hopefully, we should see the attack cease. So now that we've gained some visibility into what an attack looks like, we're going to go ahead and fire off a different tool and see if we can get a different sort of reaction. Now, this is a good opportunity to use a display filter. And the puzzling thing is that a display filter is a totally different type of syntax than a capture filter. So in this case, I only want to see attacks that are aimed directly at the uh, uh, broadcasting uh, point, which in this case is the MAC address of our router. So we're going to type wlan.bssid equals equals, and you can see the command has already been typed here, but the MAC address of our access point. So by specifying this, we're going to say we don't want to see anything that isn't directed specifically at the station that we're concerned with, in this case, our test router. So now we can see a lot of these packets have been filtered out, things that were basically attacking other devices other than our test router. So we will go back to our attack window and let's execute AirPlay and G and see if there's a difference we can detect. Now, you can see there's a flood of orange packets, and that means that we're seeing exclusively deauthentication packets. Now, for a security researcher or somebody looking to establish who or what is happening, uh, is attacking their network, this can tell you that, uh, in fact, someone is using a particular tool, in this case, AirPlay and G, against your network. If I were to use MDK3 instead, we would see a blend between yellow and orange packets, deauthentication and disassociation, and know that someone was instead using MDK3. This information about the attacker gives valuable clues for someone who's looking to stop the source, or at least look for the person responsible. When I go ahead and stop this, we should see an immediate succession to all the deauthentication packets that have been sent. Now, if you want to see more information about these, you can go ahead and click on them, and then click on the little down arrows to see the other information that's contained in the radio broadcasts. This is really information because you can see things like the MAC address of the sender and other information that the tool that we're using, or that the attacker is using rather, is spoofing in order to make other devices disconnect. So this is all really fascinating and it will allow you to understand how some of these tools like MDK3 actually work under the hood and what they look like to someone who's trying to defend a network. There's other great tools you can use with Wireshark as well, such as looking at the wireless conversations, but we'll save that for another tutorial. For now, you can use Wireshark to identify whether or not your network's under attack from a lot of common script kitty tools. And just like that, anyone can write a capture filter for Wireshark to easily detect disassociation and deauthentication packets. Now, we used MDK3 as an example, but any noisy attack could be detected via this method. So if you, you are using a method like this to attack a network you don't have permission to be messing with, then you might be a lot more obvious than you think you're being. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.